Hi guys. It is a lovely summer evening here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Uh, we're at twilight sitting here on the deck of my new tiny house with my little dog <clears throat> sitting in his amazing woman chair. Since I have no amazing woman to sit in the chair, I have an amazing dog sitting in the amazing woman chair. But that's another rant for somewhere else. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, today's chronicle of the collapse was certainly an easy one because once again, we are coming uh, up with the number one story on planet Earth according to Yahoo News and Associated Press. And uh, I've seen the same story run everywhere from NPR to fizz.org. This, uh, this uh, NSS headline, this is for anybody suffering a delusion that Joe Biden is going to save the planet from fossil fuels. Uh, Joe Credit Card Biden. Uh, so what is he uh, up to? And uh, so... I admit, I and Sandy Shellis both, when we first heard this story, we both jumped to the erroneous conclusion and we were actually attempting to, to uh, what, what is the right word, uh, defend Joe Biden and blaming this on Donald Trump. This, as it explains here in the story, this is not something that Donald Trump set in motion on his way out of office. Okay, uh, so do not, as I start reading this story, do not make the ridiculous uh, jump to conclusions that I made and Sandy made that this is another Donald Trump story. All Donald Trump did uh, at the end of his administration was hand off the fossil fuel torch to Joe Biden. And Joe Biden is uh, out trumping Donald Trump. Gee, U.S. drilling approvals increase despite Joe Biden's climate pledge. I have to do it one time, guys. I have to do it one time. Joe Biden's climate pledge. Okay, I'm not going to, uh, I had to do that one time. All right. I just had to preface that. Approvals for companies to drill for oil and gas on U.S. public lands are on pace this year. This year, the first year of Joe Biden's term in office to reach their highest level since oil man George W. Bush was president, underscoring President Joe Biden's reluctance to more forcefully curb petroleum production in the face of industry and Republican resistance. Wow, who would have thunk it? The Interior Department approved about 2,500 permits to drill on public and tribal lands in the first six months of the year, according to that Associated Press analysis of government data. That includes more than 2,100 drilling approvals since Biden took office January 20th. These are not drilling approvals that were made uh, at the end of Trump's term that Biden can do nothing to stop. Now, I was talking about that uh, at the end of Trump's term, you know, how he rushed through as many drilling permits as he could because Joe Biden would have no ability to stop any approvals that so just understand these are not Donald Trump's now four uh, 400 of them were 
you know, between January 1st and January 20th, 400 of the 2,500 were, but 2,100 approvals to drill on U.S. public lands were signed off by that uh, noble savage, whatever her name is, at the Interior Department and uh, Mr. Climate, uh, Joe Biden. I don't know. I don't hear anything from John Kerry weighing in on this. New Mexico and Wyoming had the largest number of approvals. Montana, Colorado, and Utah also had hundreds each. So Texas, oh, well, there is no public land in Texas. The reason Texas isn't on this list is because there is no public land in Texas. All of that drilling is on private land. Biden campaigned last year on a pledge to end new drilling on federal lands to rein in climate changing emissions. <clears throat> His pick to oversee those lands, Interior Secretary Deb, Deb Haland, you know, who is uh, a Native American noble savage, was an adamant opponent of dwelling on federal lands while in Congress and a co-sponsor of the liberal Green New Deal. But the steps taken by Biden's administration to date on fossil fuels are more modest, including a temporary suspension on new oil and gas leases on federal lands that a judge blocked last month anyway blocked petroleum, uh, so what he did block, okay, so the two things that he did keep his promise about, he blocked petroleum sales in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, uh, you know, which Trump wanted to open up, and he officially canceled the Keystone XL oil pipeline from Canada. So uh, he is resting on those laurels, so Anwar and, uh, and Keystone are dead, thanks to uh, Joe Biden. Uh, but these other steps are more modest. Yes, I would say uh, taking uh, drilling on public land approvals out trumping Donald Trump to go back to when a, an oil man was in uh, power. Uh, because vast fossil fuel reserves already are under lease. Those actions did nothing to slow drilling on public lands and water that account for about a quarter of U.S. oil production. Uh, talking about the cancellation of Anwar and uh, Keystone did nothing to slow drilling on public lands and waters. Uh, and that is because of the vast fossil fuel reserves that were already under lease that were approved by Donald Trump. I, I'm adding a lot uh, since I'm not, uh, since uh, I am not an editor at AP. I'm trying to explain this to people uh, who just uh, don't understand what's going on here. Further complicating Biden's climate agenda is a recent rise in gasoline prices to over $3 a gallon in many parts of the country. Any attempt, any attempt to limit petroleum production could push gasoline prices even higher and risk souring the economic recovery from Corona panic. Yes, this is uh, some indust energy industry analyst, Parker Fawcett. Quote, he is walking the tightrope. Yes, uh, noting that Keystone and Anwar came with that Keystone and Anwar came without huge political calls because they were aimed at future projects. Quote, those easy wins 
do not necessarily have huge impacts on the market today. Biden is definitely backing off taking drastic action that would rock the market. We are what you are going to see is U.S. oil production is going to continue to rebound, close quote. Uh, Haland, you, you know, the, the noble savage, uh, Deb Haland, now in charge at Interior, who, you know, who used to be such a vocal opponent of drilling on public lands, uh, has now sought to tamp down Republican concern over potential constraints on the industry. Yes, she said during a House Natural Resource Committee hearing last month that there was no, quote, plan right now for a permanent ban. And, and guys, do not uh, confuse this whole story with fracking. You know, I mean, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were falling all over themselves, particularly when they were in here, you know, speaking in Pennsylvania, that there has never been a plan to ban fracking. Uh, he never had that on the table. Uh, but the liar in chief certainly uh, promised that he was going to ban uh, fossil fuels fuel drilling on public lands, and uh, he did make this little temporary ban, uh, you know, just so he could get elected into office, and then, of, of course, uh, the, the judge threw it out anyway. All right, this is Deb Haland talking to Colorado Republican Representative Doug Lamburn, quote, gas and oil production will continue well into the future, and we believe that is the reality of our economy and the world we are living in. Thank you, Deb, for uh, pointing that out to anybody suffering any delusion that uh, you are going to see any sort of reduction in, in, in fossil fuel demand. Uh, you will see an increase in all of this little lefty, uh, greeny New Deal stuff. You are going to see more solar and hydro, all of that crap uh, is going to increase, but it's not going to decrease the fossil fuels. Are you following me? Uh, you're mixing up percentages with totals. The total fossil fuel, fuel use is going to stay right where the hell it is under Joe Biden, where it was under Donald Trump. And we're just going to add more of this planet-eating stuff, uh, you know, with the UN calling it sustainable green clean energy, which is a bunch of Don't worry, I'll get rid of this button again after this rant. Uh, or, I mean, I, I think you understand what I'm saying. So they can, they can act like fossil fuels are shrinking in the total percentage of the energy demand uh, stew. So looking at it that way, uh, they can make that big green lie. I don't know if, if Derek even included that bright green lie. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, I think you get what I'm saying. Of course, AP doesn't bother to explain this to you, so hopefully I'm, I'm explaining it to you a little better. Wow, you will not uh, believe... Uh, Interior officials declined further comment on permits issued under Biden. I bet they did. Okay, let's go remember this fellow Donald Trump. Under former President Donald Trump, a staunch industry, you know, oil and gas industry supporter, 
the interior department reduced the time it takes to review drilling applications from a year or more in some cases to just a few months. Okay, now getting back, this is what happened at the end of Donald Trump's term that some of us were had this confused with. Companies rushed to lock in drilling rights before the new administration, and in December, Trump's last full month in office, agency officials approved more than 800 permits, <coughs> far more than any prior month during Trump's presidency. So those 800 permits and those 400 more in, in January, so those 1,200 permits are the ones that Joe Biden can do nothing to disapprove or if I mean they are already gotten the green light and uh, Joe Biden uh, cannot give them a red light but you would think by his campaign promises that he wouldn't be giving uh, 2,100 more the green light the pace you know of approvals did drop when Biden first took office under a temporary order that elevated review of permits to senior administration officials, but approvals have since rebounded to a level that exceeds the monthly number seen through most of Donald Trump's presidency. Yes. I uh, and the, if the recent trends continue, the U.S. Interior Department under Deb Halen could issue close to 6,000 permits to drill for oil and gas on U.S. public lands by the end of this year. The last time so many were issued was fiscal year 2008 amid an oil boom driven by crude prices that reached an all-time high of $140 per barrel that June. Decisions on about 4,700 uh, drilling applications remain, uh, pen remain pending as of June 1st, which means approvals are likely to continue at a heavy pace as officials work through a backlog left over from the Trump administration, said uh, industry analyst Fawcett. So uh, they're working through a backlog and going right ahead and, and, and approving them. Uh, environmentalists who share the administration's goals on climate have expressed growing frustration in recent weeks as the prospects for a ban on drilling fade. They contend the administration has authority to take executive action that would stop further permits from being issued, but has caved in to Republican pressure. This is Mitch Jones, policy director for the environmental group Food and Water Watch, quote, every indication is that they, meaning the Joe Biden administration, have no plans of actually fulfilling their campaign promises. The result of that will be continued and increasing development of fossil fuels on our public lands which means more climate change, close quote. The administration's defenders, the, the Joe Biden administration's defenders, the shrinking group of clueless morons calling themselves a Joe Biden administration defender, say that he has been forced to be pragmatic in the face of a Senate split 50-50 between Democrats and Republicans and questions over whether the government could even legally stop drilling on leases already sold to companies. That has meant foregoing a drilling ban in hopes of getting 
bipartisan support for a huge infrastructure package that includes clean energy incentives and other measures to address global warming. This is Jim Lyons, who is Deputy Assistant Secretary under Farrakh Obama. You remember Farrakh Obama, he was the guy who bragged that under his administration, Farrakh Obama laid more fossil fuel pipelines, more miles of pipelines were uh, installed under Farrakh Obama, and, you know, him uh, bragging and high-fiving and getting cheered on by these uh, oil workers in Cushman, Oklahoma. Uh, than any president in history. I don't know if Donald Trump got more pipelines laid down than Barack Obama, but at the end of Barack Obama's term, uh, his environmental legacy uh, was that uh, he laid down, well, not, you know what I'm saying, his administration approved more fossil fuel pipeline uh, construction than any president in U.S. history. So we're going to wrap up with Jim Lyons from the Barack Obama administration. Quote, it's the long game. You have got to have, you have got to appease some of those oil and gas state senators. It means jobs back home for thousands of workers. You can't just pull the plug overnight. There you go, since I uh, did not dig the no shit Sherlock button out of my... Uh... So I am going to make a campaign promise that I will pack away the bullshit detected button again and not bring it out on this channel. I just could not uh, read a story about, uh, about uh, Joe Biden banning uh, oil and gas drilling on public lands without uh, letting my old friend explain it to you one more time. Anyway, sorry for that slip up, but it looks like a newest uh, thunderstorm is rolling in before my computer gets rained on. Me and the little dog uh, need to pack it in, get out there and uh, support your drilling on public lands by heading to a gas station. You'll probably see me in line next to you. Bye, guys. Yeah, Obama's legacy is making fucking America.